Hi, so I basically have two things to admit. One, I love Doctor Who, and two, I'm a Trekkie. I love Star Trek. And if you think about Star Trek, one of the things it's famous for is predicting the future. And whenever you look at something like a 3D printer, if you're not thinking about Star Trek replicators, there's something wrong with you. Because <laughs> the Star Trek replicator, to my mind, was the start of the idea of being able to 3D print. And of course it started in the original series and was updated for later series. But actually the idea of 3D printing came about in 1945. Harry Langster wrote a story called Things Pass By when he's talked about the elements of 3D printing. And this was followed up in 1950 by Raymond F. Jones in a story called Tools for the Trade, another awesome magazine I used to read all of the time when I was a kid. So 3D printing is in concept longer than we think and certainly outside of Star Trek which is a real shame but also the way it is. Generally thought there was David Johns in 1974 in his Ariadne column in New Scientist who was the first guy to talk about it but really no. It's also thought that Bill Masters in 1984 was the first person to patent a 3D printing system that we use today. And it's true that it is the USPTO first designation of 3D printing, but the first patent itself was Johannes F. Gottwald in 1971 with the liquid metal recorder. And that's US patent 3596285A. And I would count that as the first 3D printing patent, not masters at all. That was followed up by US Patent 4323576, a method for fabricating articles by sequential deposition in 1982. So I wouldn't say that Masters came up with it. There was a history behind that. And I wouldn't say that Johns that was the first to describe it. There was a history behind it. And that's often the way it is. There's often a history behind of these things that we don't actually think much about. But the article in New Scientist and the Master's Patent were certainly landmarks in 3D printing. There was kind of two major competing technologies. One was laying down metal powders and sintering them, sintering them, but following the DeWitt and Andre patent of 1984, stereolithography really took off. Stereolithography is the same thing that you see in the opening sequence of Toy Soldiers. You shine a light on a photo curable material and the device emerges from the bath of liquid polymer. Very cool. And that dominated sort of the early to mid 80s in the way that 3D printers for home use were thought about. Now, this is a little qualified because a 3D printer at that time would have cost you something in the region of $300,000. So there weren't that many homes that could afford it. 1984, when Charles Hull came out with US patent 4575330. And that's where we introduced this idea of layers. So instead of having a laser dot all over the place, you had a mask, a screen that could print a mask and that would cure a polymer and then rise up layer by layer using a stereolithographic technique and that's why our 3D printer files all end in STL, it's thanks to Charles. And that idea of layering instead of dotting around all over the place became really important in 3D printing. So that idea of layering up led to the first commercial successful printer, the SLA-1, which came out in about 1987 or so. But it also introduced this idea of filament. Because you could now layer, then they started using what's called a fusible deposition material, or FDM material, and that led directly to the filament printers we know, like MakerBot. The 80s kind of laid the foundation for it and throughout the 90s we saw development of metal sintering, laser sintering, selective laser sintering, that kind of thing. And it became known actually as additive manufacture because manufacture normally you take a lump of something and you beat or cut it into shape and computer control was mostly CNC. This idea of using the material and building it up instead of knocking it down was a new way of looking at materials and it really took off in the 1990s with that development through uh, people like the Fruhoff Group. For years FDM printing and filament printing in particular dominated the whole market. It was the place where you saw all those 3D printers. But towards the end of the 2010s and the beginning of the 2020s, which is where we are now, what we're seeing is the rise of stereolithographic printing like this. 
coming straight back because those machine prices have fallen from the £300,000 region to a couple of hundred pounds. You can now buy yourself an entry level machine for a couple of hundred pounds. Now, this is a bit of a plug and I want to remind you of something. Remember, we are running a competition. The details of the competition are in video number 1471 and it is, in brief, to make a water wheel that can light an LED from any materials, any style that you want. It just has to be a water uh, motor and run an LED. But if you're interested in the competition, have a look at video 1471 because we are giving away one of these. I mean, this is mine, so it's a bit used, but Elegoo have donated a brand new unboxed Mars Pro 2. So there it is. Now the competition closes on the 12th of May, so we've got about four weeks left. It's been running for four weeks, but 12th of May it closes and whoever wins is going to receive this in the post. Unopened, unboxed, brand new MSLA UV 3D printer, which I consider to be the state of the art at the moment. So although we've talked quite a bit about filament printers, about stereolithographic printers, about metal sintering printers, that's by no means the limit of what 3D printing has been up to. There's a whole range of materials that have been used, including things like um, clay, chocolate, layered paper, um, powder deposition, they've got powder batter, they spray a binder in it to make um, gypsum models of things, just a whole host of things that are being made applicable to different situations for different things, including multimedia, multi-mixed and electronic components, so a very exciting field. But perhaps the most exciting thing is what our people like MIT and UC Berkeley and Yale have been up to. They've taken that one step further to realise a replicator in true Star Trek style. And they're actually getting so close now to a Star Trek style replicator machine, it really gives me hope for the future. So certainly, 3D printing is an extremely exciting world, and in China, it's been taught to school children, and here we're thinking about it as part of the STEM. So it may, may not be too late to teach an old dog new tricks. I'm getting into 3D printing, and I think it's something that a lot of people should be. It's one of the reasons we're running the competition. So make sure you review that, get an entry in, and you could win yourself a free of charge posted to you. 3D printer. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the rest of the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.